the gate. Grand to see you, Frank. It's just like old times. Not exactly. Oh, come on, relax. I'll try. I got no hard feelings. That's what you're worried about. Mm -hmm. I'm not worried about that. Just a cop doing your job. That's right. Yeah. Come on, sit down. Come on. So. Let's pretend we're in my office, huh? You think you can manage that? You asked to see me. What do you want? Ah, you want to get right down to it, huh? Neither one of us likes small talk. The way you remember it? Yeah, well, I got a lot more time now. If you don't mind, Hart, I got a lot of things to do. Chief Hart! Don't you forget that, Frank. Don't you ever forget that. So you want to know why you're here. I got an item that's just right for you. What with your new responsibilities and all. 
What's the uh, item? A couple of cops I know. Uniform guys. Brothers. They work out of Brooklyn. Named Griselli. What about him? I hear they're selling guns. That's it? Well, you want more? Selling guns. You could phone that into Wyckoff. Well, sure I could. Maybe I wanted to see you personally. You know, I've been wondering about you, Frank. I've been wondering what you've been doing with all that momentum you got going. Tying me into the Wallace homicide. Putting away the chief of detectives. If anybody else done that, they'd have had a command position for sure. I didn't want a command position. <laughs> oh, sure. You just wanted to investigate, that's all. Well, now you're set up with internal affairs, your own special squad. Uh, a cop's cop. With your little broom going whisk, 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 whisk. If that's it. Hey, I didn't mean to insult you, Frank. I just wanted to see your face again. The face of a small-time detective. Just the kind you put on Mickey Mouse stuff like this. Hey, you see, it is like old times. I sign the case, and you do the dirty work. On the gate. Hey, Jenny, that girl. Hey, what's her name? Uh, Wallace's daughter. I hear she left you. Is it true? <laughs> yeah, the way I hear it, he's practically running that prison. Same as he ran the detective division. Hart always understood power. Still, so far, everything he says checks out. How does he get his information? Some from in prison, some from before. He was a chief. He knew everything. Does he really expect to get brownie points feeding this junk like that? Harden is his only hope, Frank. But don't expect him to crawl. No, Hart never crawled for anybody. Sit down, Frank. Yeah, thanks. Anyway, this came in yesterday. Some Vietnamese refugees got a restaurant in Chinatown. It says it was a detective in Saigon during the war. Was he asking for a job? <laughs> it seems that uh, he read in the papers about this, uh, this homicide we've got. This girl tied up in this weird way, dumped into the river. It says that in Saigon in 75, he investigated a similar case. He closed these photographs. Well, he's out of something. Mm -hmm. That's the same rig. Who's got the case? Ray Boys. Why don't you give these to him? You know him? Anyway, there's a special element here. Now, uh, this Vietnamese guy doesn't spell it out, but uh, the implication's clear enough. Mm -hmm. What's the implication? That back in Saigon, when he thought he was onto something, what he thought he was onto was another cop. Why don't you and Aaron take a trip over there, have some dinner for yourself, and talk to this guy? You got it. Thanks, Frank. Oh, uh, what about the Grisellis? Oh, there'll be something. You can count on it. Come on, check them out. <laughs> was Marie Evans. She was a hooker. It took boys a week to find that out. No one's claimed her, no one cares about her, including boys. That's it? Pretty much. Boys figures it was a rough trick. Says hookers are always getting themselves whacked. Didn't he care why we were interested? Nah. It's kind of slow, Frank. So, how's your personal life? Barren. Sometimes I even regret my divorce. <laughs> How's things going with you? Mm. Well, as always, Jean. I tell you, sometimes the way she looks at you, Frank. Ooh. Yeah, Jean's a great gal. A good detective, too. Yeah, she's a cop. It's not what you want. Mm. Sometimes I'm not so sure exactly what I do want. Hart tells me I'm small time. Forget it, Frank. It's how he makes himself feel big. Remember, he wasn't such a hot shot detective. But he knows how to control people. Yeah, that he knows how to do. 
Daddy knows how to do. Nineteen seventy-five, final weeks of the war. Very unusual case. Girl dumped into the Saigon River. She was a singer. Her name was uh, Pak Tuk, means white bamboo. Mm. What happened? It was very brutal. Brutal in what way? The way in which she was tied. Here. Tied a kind of a peculiar harness, pulleys and noose. By struggling, she strangled herself. Genius. But very cruel. Yes. Very cruel. Did you make an arrest? No. Any ideas? I knew he was an American. How'd you know that? Three reasons. Why three? First, there was the crime itself. A psycho murder, so? We never have sadistic psycho murders in our culture. Never? Never, Lieutenant. Second, the victim sang in a nightclub that catered primarily to GIs. But the third reason, and the most important, I found a witness, a nine-year-old boy who saw the body being pulled from an official United States car. He drew me this picture. Notice the armband. The child drew the letters backwards, but it is the uniform of an American MP. That close to the end of the war, there couldn't have been that many MPs around. Around 50, no more than 100. But people were distracted and the officials, I, I, I just could not get a list. Okay, what happened then? About two weeks later, my country fell. And uh, my advisor, Mr. Hunter, he got my family and myself out. But I could never forget Baktuk. Unfinished business. Here. Since when does IAD care about a hooker? We got ex-MPs. That's why Wyckoff got interested. The military trains them. They like the work, they come to us. They're disciplined, motivated. They usually make good cops. Yeah, so what if this MP, if he was an MP, went into something else? Maybe he became a grocer or a plumber. Seems to me the odds are pretty long. Yeah, they're long, but you gotta admit they're interesting. 1975, a bar girl gets killed in Saigon. 13 years later, a hooker gets killed the same way here. Now, that's strange. No, oh, it's strange, all right. I'll give you that. Get in touch with immigration. Find out more about Quinn. And try to locate that advisor, his hunter. See what he says, if he remembers the case. We're gonna need to run a computer search, so we need a list. Contact the Pentagon, get the name of every MP that served the Saigon area. And say, two weeks before the murder until right up to the end. Run them up against area resident lists, voting lists, phone books, list the local law enforcement personnel, merge and see if we get overlaps, right? You got it. Morning, Internal Affairs Division. What can I do for you? No, he's not in yet. Want to leave a message? How's it going with Temkin? Meeting with the prosecutors at 2 o'clock. Sounds good. Want to sit in? Yeah, I'll, uh... I'll try to make it. Sal, not busy, are you? No, I got nothing to do. Good. I want you to give me a rundown on these guys, Griselli brothers. Find out everything you can, how good they are, how much money they got, and then check the streets. If they're dealing guns, I want to find out what kind. And don't get too close. Remember, guys who sell guns, sometimes fire them. OK, I'm on it. I'll try to make it. Terrific. He likes you, Gene. Can it, Sal? Well, maybe not like that, but you gotta kinda plant the idea. Will you just can it? What the hell are we doing down here? Frank, I'm telling you, this one's special. You trust me? Only reason I held back is I wanted you to hear it fresh. Well, it better be good. It is, believe me. All right, here we are. It's on the fifth floor. $7,000 worth of sofa. They did some job on it, huh, Frank? 
Oh, Miss Gates. I'd like you to meet Lieutenant Frank Janik. Frank, this is Joanna Gates, 20th Century Design. Very interesting place. Glad you find it interesting. If I ever need anything for the 20th century, I know exactly where to look for it. And I'll be right here, Lieutenant, just waiting to help you with your decorating needs. Good. Now, now uh, about this sofa. Couch. Excuse me? Well, it, we don't call it a sofa, we call it a couch. Yeah, well, uh, what you're saying that uh, the two guys came in here, they flashed police IDs, they slid open this couch, and they took out a couple of bags of dope, is that right? That's right, but that's not and the problem. And then what happened? They said, don't worry, that it wasn't my fault, and that I wasn't going to get into any trouble. And? And then they left. So what exactly is your problem? The problem, Lieutenant, is this couch. Would well, you want reimbursement? Is that what it is? We can offer that. No. You go downtown. You, you put in a requisition. Yes. You yes. tell yes. them the requisition. Yeah, Frank, you just Frank, tell them that. Frank, please. She already went there. There's no record of such a confiscation. Are you saying these guys aren't real cops? Yes, that's exactly what I'm trying to say. This couch was consigned to me. My name was on the crate, but I never ordered it. Then why didn't you tell me that? You never gave me a chance. Now, look, Miss Gates, I don't mean to be rude, but... but... you are. What? You are rude. Miss Gates, would you just tell the lieutenant the rest of it? Thank you. Of course, it occurred to me also that they weren't real cops, so after they left, I had my assistant follow them. He saw them get to a car around the corner. He wrote down the license number. Well, there you are. Track them down and bring them in. Frank, we did track them, Frank, but we didn't bring them in. Why not? Well, Miss Gates here ID'd their photographs. Turns out they were cops. Tony and Mario Griselli. You sure? Positive. Can I go back to work now? I've got clients. Unless the lieutenant here has any further questions. Lieutenant, do you have any further questions? No questions, Miss Gates, but I'd appreciate it if you'd If I don't us. leave town because you may want to talk to me. Yeah. Look, I'm sorry Bye, I got Sergeant. off on the wrong foot. I, I... Lieutenant. Miss Gates, appreciate it. So maybe Hart's tip was bigger than we thought. Good looking woman. Huh. She liked you. <laughs> She did. A little antagonistic, maybe, but that's usually a good sign. Well? Well, what? Well, what? Did you like her? Not particularly. Why not? I thought she was rude. Spoiled, used to getting things her own way. Fine. Hey, Frank, there's a limit to what I can do for you. I got my own life to lead. Do you mind if we talk a little business? Not at all. Tell Sal to put the heat in the Griselli's. I want a full report. I thought you'd like her. Will you stop with that? The bag lady was here. Marie's body was wedged under there against those pilings. That old bag lady cuts it pretty fine. Was she dumped here or did she float? She floated. We don't know from where. The harbor unit? Harbor unit's got its theory. So does the Coast Guard. Anywhere from that next pier, they say, at the George Washington Bridge. What about Jersey? But the only thing they'll say for certain is she probably was not dumped from the Jersey side. For certain? Probably? That's what I'm saying. Come on, we got a lot to do. By the way, Frank, Joanna Gates called. Yeah? Yeah. She wants your phone number. Well, do I give it to her or what? Sure, give it to her. Why not? Think she's hot for your body, Frank. Give me a break. Enormous hatred of women. But in his normal life, he could get along with them very well. Married, have a girlfriend. Might even be a ladies' man. Ladies' man? This goes way beyond bondage, Lieutenant. Tell me. He renders his victim helpless by putting her in an impossible position. Once she's exhausted, she chokes herself. Yeah. You see the equation? Serves her right. She did it, not me. Ergo, I am blameless. Cause of death, self-strangulation. We know all that. What else? 
interesting bite marks on her right shoulder. She was alive when she was bitten. Marks like this? I made an impression of the teeth. Similar. Mm, but I'd have to examine the body. Sorry. It happened 13 years ago in another country far away. Sure, I remember. North Vietnamese armies were rolling down the coast. Saigon was in a stranglehold. We were all wondering if we'd ever get out of there alive. And there was Quinn carrying on about this singer, insisting that her killer had to be an American. An American MP. What do you think? Yeah, maybe he was. Maybe he wasn't. You'd wonder why a guy who would do a thing like that would wear an armband, use an official car. I'll tell you, Quinn struck us as being pretty good. Well, he was a fine detective. Not corrupt, like a lot of them were over there. Still, I had this feeling. He seemed to change when he got that case. Became some kind of a fanatic. I never did figure out what was bugging him, but like he wanted the killer to be an American. Mr. Hunter, why do you suppose that was? It was a strange time, Sergeant. You see, I think, like a lot of Vietnamese, he blamed us for the collapse of his country. And like a lot of them, he was looking for a scapegoat. Yeah. Uh, uh, this is Joe Gates. I'm the woman who... Yeah, I remember. Um, I'm calling to apologize. For what? For saying you were rude. I probably was. Look, let's just forget it, huh? No, no um, I respect cops, and I, I was the one being rude. I, I wanted you to know that. I, am, am I getting you at a bad time? Oh, no, no. No, not at all. Um, Lieutenant, I, I hope that you don't think that I'm too brazen, but I would like to ask you and Mrs. Janik out for dinner. There isn't any Mrs. Janik. Well, then I I'd like to take you out to dinner. That isn't necessary. No, no, of course it's not. It's, it's something that I'd like to do. <sighs> well, I don't know. Um, look, Miss Gates. Joe, please. Would you be free Friday night? <sighs> I don't usually... Um... We can split the bill. I mean, if it'll make you feel any better, Lieutenant. Actually, Joe, I uh, think it'll be very nice. Why don't I pick you up after work? 7.30 at my gallery. Good. Oh, and by the way, the name's Frank. I know. Good night. Cellies are so so cops. Low profile, but not too low. This is Mario, second from the left. The smart one, cautious. This is his house, nothing special. Here he is with his kids. Well, here he is with one of his birds. He's been with the department 11 years. Below average on collars, no major infractions. And he likes to bowl. He's very average. You know what I mean? Not exactly. It's goody-goody time, Frank. There's nothing personal. There's nothing that stands out. Maybe he's a boring guy. Or maybe that's what he wants you to think. See, personally, I don't find him so boring. I think he's very interesting. You want to tell me why? In a minute. But first, let's take a look at Brother Tony. Yeah, he's not so smart as Mario. He's not quite so cautious. Check out the Cadillac. And here's his house. It's a little more upscale from Mario's. They live close by, but his neighborhood's flashier. They're crooks, Frank. See this pizza place? They own it. And this one. And this parking lot. And the laundromat. And the bowling alley that Mario likes to hang out in. 
all stuff nobody notices. And there's more. Such as? Car washes in Queens, a couple of condos down in Miami, uh, investment property outside of Philadelphia. All that from selling guns? It's a lot more than guns, Frank. The word on the street is they'll sell you anything you want. There's lots of cash washing around their precinct. Colombian drug dealers, stashes in private homes. And the Grisellis know the streets. When they make an arrest, it's like uh, an amateur or a juvenile or someone like that. Well, you got a hunch going, it's out. What do you think I ought to do? Sting them. How? Well, the way I'd do it, I'd uh, go up to them and I'd say, I know they deal guns. But I'm not interested in guns. I got a lot of guns. Well, what am I interested in? Information. Where all that money in the neighborhood is. Where those stashes are. Who do I represent? Cops. <laughs> cops? Manhattan cops that want to make a score. But you don't tell them that. You know, they got to drag that out of you. Uh, don't go in with the wire. Because at first, they're going to be a little suspicious. They might even uh, rough you up. They got a good thing going here. I mean, why should they let me in? Hmm. After making all that money protecting the Colombians, they're not going to go around robbing them, too. But fresh cops from Manhattan. We can do it and split with them if they set it up for us. I like it. Just go on in there cold. They're confident, like you know the kind of guys that would go for it. Then what? Hmm? And see if they bite. And if they don't? See if they report it. You're really into this, aren't you? Oh, yeah. Police and the police. The ultimate detective work. Isn't it, Frank? Not for me, it isn't. Nice, clean girl, this Marie Evans was. And neat. Ah, she was very neat. Frank. Looks 
like we got a little pharmacy here. She did heavy drugs. Boy Smith, that. Mm -hmm. And in Saigon in 1975, you could buy this stuff on every corner. So what do we got? Some kind of drug case here? Maybe. Sir, I'm sorry. We're about to close. Uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm here to see Miss Gates. Oh, the detective. Well, Joe's just finishing up with some clients, so take a seat or look around. Thank you. Sure. Maybe it's an acquired taste. But you're interested. Oh, yeah, I'm interested. So maybe it could grow on you. Oh, it could. But I got to admit that my taste runs more to early Salvation Army. Original. Let's go out this way. David, um, you'll be a sweetheart and lock up for me. Have fun. So I'd like to know one thing. Who is Joanna Gates? Well, you are a detective, aren't you? Mm-hmm. Well, which version do you want, the long or the short? Whichever. I was brought up in Newark, working class folks. Got married right out of college to an architect. Oh? Mm. Eight years and then we got divorced. Any, um, any family? Mm-mm. I mean, no kids. Unless you want to count my kid brother. I practically raised him. Hmm. And then? Then, after the divorce, I went back to school, studied design, worked with a um, decorator for a couple years, then I opened up my own gallery. You lead a very interesting life. Mm. I think you lead an interesting life. No, <laughs> it's different. Yeah, what I deal with is ugly. Crooks. Killers, cops on a the take. They're pretty sick of that. No, what you deal with is... It's beautiful stuff. Depends on how you look at it. Yeah. I guess. So, tell me about it. About what? About your life. I mean, what's it like to be a cop? You really want to know? Yeah, I really want to know. So, Hart was your biggest case? Well, it was never my case, officially. Some of the guys knew I was on it. I just didn't want the credit. Why not? Well, a long story. The Hart business was personal. It was on account of him that my oldest friend committed suicide. And he set up the murder of my girlfriend's father. That's horrible. We broke up a year or so ago. Do you miss her? Well, it's nice to meet someone new. Yeah, it's... It's good for me, too. Thanks for a great evening. Yeah. I... I enjoyed it. Good night. Good night. Suspense is killing me, Frank. We got a hundred MPs in there with a few thousand local area names ready to merge. <laughs> Wanna bet how many overlaps we get? 
You have four overlaps, Lieutenant. Two civilians. One East Village, one New Rochelle. Two law enforcement types. State Trooper, Sergeant. Narcotics Detective, NYPD. Okay, but how do we know our killer isn't from out of town? We don't. We just have to give it our best shot. Yep. Divide them up and investigate the hell out of them. Thanks, Ellen. I didn't want to be a cop. I still got a lawsuit going for what they did to me over there. Yeah? What happened? Post-Vietnam Stress Syndrome. You ever hear of that? Sure. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah. One more thing. You happen to know where you were on November 17th of this year? I was on vacation in Hawaii with my wife and kids. Where were you? There's Vaughn over there on the phone. Sharpest man in the troop. Taught my kid how to box. It's terrific. Anything else? Lovely wife. Church vestryman. Captain of our troop basketball squad. It's wonderful. Does he play the cello? Hmm? Maybe you should put up a statue of him in front of the post here. What are you talking about, detective? Well, he's perfect, isn't he? Sure. I kind of liked being an MP. Same sort of work I do now. Really? Sure, man. Like, I keep the discipline here. So, um, you like to tie people up? I'm not really into rope. So what is your scene? Kind of like yours, man. How do you mean? Handcuffs, chains. Leg irons, you know, steel. You guys work with Jerry Renfrew. Tell me about him. This is strictly off the record, fellas. Internal affairs? Anything we say is on the record, you know what I mean? Fine. Just tell me what you know about him. Jerry's a loner, street smart, knows what he's doing. Yeah, good sources. People trust him. Is that it? What about his personal life? Why don't you ask him? Hey, we gotta get downtown. Yeah. Would you excuse us, detective? Previous engagement. Hanging out with shoe flies, fellas? Gay leather disciplinarian. What can I tell you? I'm not into the rope scene, man. How's this alibi? Airtight. At the bar every night, unfortunately. Hmm. Dave? Yeah. Vaughn loved the military, so when he got out, he chose the closest thing he could find. Anyway, seems to me if the MP was black, the Vietnamese kid would have drawn him black. Makes sense. How about you, Gene? Jerry Renfrew. I like him, Frank. Why? First, he's an ARC. We know about them. Second, he wasn't just a patrol MP. He was in the CID, based in a detention center for high-ranking enemy prisoners. Criminal investigation. That could fit, Frank. Yeah. What else? Just a feeling. From what I can find out, he's been acting very withdrawn lately, starting about the time Marie Evans was killed. Well, I trust your instincts, Gene. Anyway, he's all we've got, so I think we better take a good look at him. Isn't it great? I've been to Florence, Paris, Rome, all beautiful cities. But for me, Manhattan is the best. Yeah. No doubt about it, it's a great town. It's so electric. Can't you feel it? Yeah. 
But from where I stand, I can also feel the danger. Huh? But it's romantic. I think I decided to get into design because I came from such an ugly place. <laughs> the work's not that bad. Oh, my neighborhood is bad. Cold? Yeah. You know, sometimes you can surround yourself with beautiful things and, and, and still feel incomplete. Hey, sucker, who the hell are you? Detective, get his piece. Then see if he's wired. Trying to set us up, detective? I told you already, I'm here to make a deal. Deal, huh? We got a deal for you. How about we turn you in? You wouldn't do that. You wouldn't? So? What do you got to say for yourself? I heard you're a couple of smart guys. Smart enough to listen. That would you hear. Yeah. Am I under the wrong impression? Am I talking to the wrong guys? You tell me. Naturally, us being cops, we don't want to rip off civilians. Naturally. Oh, but we want to help ourselves to some of this really big money that we hear is stashed around your precinct. Stashed where? Homes. Who's homes? Colombians. Drug dealers. We got drug dealers in our precinct home? If he says so, Mario. Okay, so it goes like this. The cops making a bust. We go in there. Nobody messes with us. Nobody wants to shoot out, okay? I suppose one of these drug dealers gets arrested a year or so down the line. He's been ripped off by dirty cops. He's going to want to trade that in, get himself a better deal. But the way we work it, he's got nothing to trade. We're from another borough. He doesn't know who we are. And what we need from you is intelligence. Who to hit, when, and where. For that, we pay you 20%. Come in, Frank. Lieutenant Frank Janik, Detective Ray Boyce. How are you, Ray? Detective Boyce has a problem, Frank. Uh, Ray, why don't you uh, tell him what's on your mind yourself? Hmm? Seems you're running an investigation on one of my cases. So what's the big idea? This hooker gets strangled, she turns up in the river? Nobody cares. At least I don't think anybody did. What's your question, Ray? I want to know what the hell's going on. Well, like you said, we're running a parallel investigation. Am I under suspicion? What do you people think I've done? It's got nothing to do with you, Ray, right? There have been double investigations before, Ray, even triple investigations, you know that. Maybe I do, maybe I don't. I heard about you. Oh, yeah? What have you heard? You get off on things like this. Like what? Internal affairs. Bringing down a cop. Take it easy now, Ray. Take it easy, Ray. You know, it sounds like you've been working too hard, Ray. It sounds like you need a good vacation. I'll talk to you, John. All right, Jean. Hi, Gene. Ah, I'm sorry I'm late. Problem. It's four flights up. Renfrew's got some unregistered informants, like all narcs, right? I talked to that assistant DA again, the one who thinks he's sleazy. She put me on to Martina. Who is she? Martina Rosoff, Russian immigrant, dancer. I think you're gonna find her interesting, Frank. Jerry Renfrew? Sure, he saw Marie. 
Occasionally even brought her stuff, but uh, never too much. What kind of stuff? Crack, coke. Skag? Yeah, she used that, sure, but, but Jerry never brought her that. How long you been using? I come here five years ago. I want to be a ballerina. <laughs> Look at me. She slept with him. That was the deal. What he brought her was supposed to be in exchange for information. But it didn't take long for Jerry to get all of her information. And after that, it was just for fun. She liked it? <laughs> yeah. Nice thing about Jerry, she once told me, was that he knew she did drugs, did tricks, and still, he didn't care. Really? Why not? Oh, he cared, because he cared about her. But he did not judge her. That's what she meant. Marie once told me that she and Jerry and me, we were the same kind of people. What kind of people's that? We don't like ourselves very much. <sighs> nice work, Jean. It's gotta be him, doesn't it? Well, I don't know about God, but it's looking good. I'm glad Aaron decided we really liked each other. But I didn't like you. What? Not at all. <laughs> she always called up Bennett you don't like and ask him out to dinner? <laughs> no, not always. Uh, you were special. Is it true what Aaron said? <laughs> what? What did Aaron say? He said that you are hot for my body. No. No, but sometimes things turn out a little differently than you think. And how did you think that they turn out? I don't think you want to know. You're good for me, you know that. Are you sure? We don't sell the kind of intelligence you want for 20%. Well, what do you sell it for? Not for any price. Well, I guess that's it, then. We sell the intelligence and the plan, not one without the other. Oh, yeah? Sounds good. And for that, we give 50%. You see, the plan, that's the whole thing. The information's nothing without the plan. Well, what kind of plan are you talking about? The whole operation. It's all in the details, Sally boy. I don't know. I mean, I'll have to check. Yeah, you do that. Yeah. Check it out with your principles. I'll get back to you. You're yeah, sure? You get back to us. Hey, Tony. I know that hooker. Diane somebody. Junkie, too. Yeah. Looks like she's doing a drug deal with Ratso there. What do you say we break up the party? Let's do it. What about him? I can tag along, right, Sally boy? Give you a little lesson in police work. All right, go! Uh, All right, there. Don't move! Come on. Right there, that's... Okay, come on. Hey, hey. You buying junk from this slime ball? Uh, huh? Oh, peddling junk to the lady, huh? I'll hand it over, sugar lips. Give me your money. Okay, I'm confiscating this. Unless you want your stinking dope back. Can I have it back? You gotta pay for it. Hey, wait a minute! Wait, wait. You... We'll sell it back to you. Cut rate. Fifty cents on the dollar? Okay. Need it bad, don't you? Yeah, I need it real bad. So pay for it. We got a special for you right here, half price. You mean it? Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, of course we mean it. So, everybody happy now? 
I don't know. I mean, I just spent double. Where's my profit? I'm not getting any profit in this. They're not happy, Mario. Oh, gee, Tony. I'll just have to confiscate this. All right, now listen, you two. This time, you got up easy. But next time, watch out. Come on. Come on. Let's get out of here. Where's the... Oh. Right, let's go. Goodbye. Like I said, Sally. It's all in the details. Right, Sally. It's all in the details. This thing you're gonna do, is it dangerous? Oh, it shouldn't be. Thanks. No, it shouldn't be if we do it right. Well, what do you do exactly? Well, first we get them to trust us, and then we double-cross them. That doesn't bother you? Bad cops? Animals. Uh, doesn't bother me at all. Still, I would have thought... What, I have trouble with the betrayal part? No, not really. See, there's something, I don't know, elegant about a really good sting. Elegant. What you do, you uh, exploit that part of a person's character that made him a criminal in the first place. If he's greedy or murderous, that's what's going to get him. In a well-managed thing, the bad guy always traps himself. And these Griselles, are they animals? Yeah, I'm afraid they are. You didn't want any more? No, thanks. Joanna, tell me the truth. Am I too old for you? Do you think you're too old for me? Well, sometimes I, uh, I wonder. <laughs> it never occurred to me that you'd worry about something like that. You're so confident and so tough. Tough. <laughs> yeah, on the street I'm tough. Who's this? Uh, that's Mark, my brother. Ah. Oh, it's a good-looking kid. What's he do? Oh, he's finding himself. Hmm. Aren't we all? Are you ready to face the city? Yes, I'm ready. Frank, uh... You don't know me that well, and maybe I'm not as good for you as you think I am. Uh, you, uh, you trying to tell me something? Maybe. Maybe I'm just saying that if you're feeling like you're too old for me, you can just say that to me. You don't have to ask me, okay? Okay. Seagulls or something. Could be. I'm up to 317 myself. You know, Frank, lately you've been looking pretty good. Contented, you know what I mean? Yeah. Everybody in the squad's been discussing it. They're all saying how good the lieutenant's looking. That's what they're saying, huh? That's what they're saying. I think it's Joanna. And Frank, she's what you've been looking for. Think so? That lady's a class act. Yeah, that she is. Through. Over there. Been standing there for over an hour. Just standing there. As if he's looking for her or something. This about does it for me, Frank. 
Let's take him. What about Marie Evans? We were lovers, okay? So why didn't you say that? I just did. But not up front, you didn't. Well, I get it. You want to see us sweat, right? No, you got me wrong, Crowley. I didn't. You didn't what? You just figure it out, okay? <laughs> you just figure it out, okay? You want to stonewall us? Where's Dow? Like our news for you, detective. You're the one that's going to get worn down. Come on, Jerry. Don't jive me. I work narcotics, okay? All right, so you know what it's like. Sure I do. I know about unregistered informants. I know how you feed them a little so they feed you a little back. I can even appreciate getting personally involved with one if she was as beautiful as Marie was. There's no regulation against it. But there is a regulation that says you know a homicide victim, you report it. Why didn't you report it, Jerry? Why? You feeling abused, Jerry? You want a lawyer? You want us to make this official? Because the minute you say you want it official, you got it, buddy. You got it. Filing false timesheets, taking unauthorized leave. Ripping off minor dealers, using their dope to pay off informants, what else? Come on, Jerry, that's nothing. We want the big stuff. I told you. You told us this. What do you want from me? What? What do we want? Yeah. You tell us. All you want me... All we want is what? You want me to confess. Confess to what? Come on, Jerry. Spit it out. You want me to say that I killed her? Did you? No. You, you didn't? didn't? No! Did we ever ask you if you killed her? Well? Well? I didn't do it. You didn't do what? I didn't do it. Didn't do... What? I didn't kill her. Sure like to believe you, Jerry, but you make it real tough, pal. I loved her. You bastards, I loved her. <laughs> Nine hours. I don't believe it. I don't think he did it. What, do you see something we don't? Maybe Fred and I are too close in there. What do you see, Frank? Uh, it's more like what I don't see. I don't see the anger. It's always a schizo. He forgot he whacked her. The guy's holding back. Uh, I know. But what? You think I like this? Working over another cop. Crowley likes it. Not me. Yeah. I didn't pick ID. They put me here. But still, I want to do the job right. You were crazy about it, weren't you? Sense. Never does. She was from this very classy family, and when they found out that she was taking dope, they cut her off. And that's when she started turning tricks. And you both really liked that, didn't you? Like what? Hitting bottom. Yeah, that's right. What was she like? I don't know. Uh, 
she was wounded somehow. And that attracted you? Yeah, we were both pretty much the same way. I'm a good cop, Jenik, but I'm not tough. I feel sorry for everybody. I mean, what kind of cop does that? So who killed her, Jerry? I swear to you, I don't know. So this Vietnamese detective, he still remembers? Yeah. He even had a witness to the body being dumped in the river. City Police Department. Yes. Before 1987, did you ever do any criminal act? No. Did you tie up Marie Evans? No. Are you responsible for the death of Marie Evans? of agitation here, here too, about Marie. Still, when I ask if he killed her, I asked him six times. His denial's consistent. Well, is he telling the truth? Well, as you know, Lieutenant, the test has limited validity. So? So, I'm afraid here the readings are inconclusive. Yeah. Yeah, aren't they always? If you can fool yourself, you can fool the polygraph. Look, we know he was involved with Marie Evans. He was an MP. You saw him react to the witness, Rory. That's another thing. Why? Quinn. Quinn? There's nothing wrong with him, Frank. He could be one of us. An obsessed cop with an unsolvable case. Yeah, could be. You're saying what? Suppose Quinn knows more than he's told us. Suppose he got his list of MPs. He narrowed it down to Jerry Renford. OK, so now he's here. But the obsession goes on. He keeps tying that knot. Yeah? And then one night he gets this idea. Since he can't nail Renfro for the old case, he'll create a new case exactly the same. He's an ex-cop. He'd know how to do that. And when Boyce can't connect Jerry and Marie, huh? Quinn writes the letter to Wyckoff. Why, Frank? It's kind of hard to believe he'd whack some gals just to make a frame. Uh, we've both seen good cops get twisted around. Look, I'm not saying that Quinn's trying to frame Renfro. I don't know. There's something about the guy. All that obsession. Why, Aaron? Why? That's the name of the game. What are we doing here? He wants to know what we're doing here, Mario. What we're doing here is we're going to give you a little test, Sally boy. You pass, and you go on to the next square. You fail, and, uh... What's the test? Go into 172, ring apartment 2C. Tell them the brothers sent you. The brothers? Ask Mrs. Valdez. She'll give you a bag. You bring it back, I'll get us. And that's it? You think you can handle it? Well, what are you waiting for? Uh, 
The brothers sent me. You Mrs. Valdez? That's me. Come on in, handsome. So you're the new bag man. Mario told me about you. Bag man? Here it is, honey. Take it. <laughs> I mean, here's the take. So take it, gorgeous. You heard her. Take it, gorgeous. I said take it. Now pose with it. Yeah, that's it. Ready for the picture. Okay. Let's go. You passed the test. I can't wear a war because I got nothing on them, but they got something big on me. If we do the sting and it goes to trial, their attorney's going to wave that photo of me and I'm going to look like a crook. What we're going to do, we're going to go to Wyckoff. We're going to tell him everything. That way you'll be protected. Okay? Okay. But I, I still got a problem. What? I don't know. The whole thing, it just... Uh, maybe we ought to call it off. Call off the sting? After what they've done to me, Frank? No way. Oh, Sad you're getting too wrapped up with them. The hook is in, Frank. Come on, the, the plan is ready to go. Mm. All right, so tell me. The main drug source is this family, uh, Colombians. They all live together in the same house. Women, children, grandparents. They want us to hit the house. Listen, on collection days, there's a lot of money laying there overnight. How much? Six, seven hundred grand. <sighs> Place must be guarded like Fort Knox. Now, Mario says that he and Tony can draw them off, and all we got to do is go and scoop up the money. What about the women? He says kill them. And the children? He said kill them, too. And if we ain't got the stomach for it, we should blindfold them. Yeah. Well, the point is, Frank, to make it look like they was hit by a rival family. Then the families go to war against each other, and we just sit back and count the cash, is that it? What do you think? Oh, it sounds pretty crude. Well, like Mario keeps telling me, it's all in the details. Is it all talk or what? No, Frank, they'll do it. I passed their stinking test. Now we just reel them in. That's all we gotta do. All right, we'll take one more step. But I'm bringing Dave in to cover your back. So from now on, whenever you talk to those guys, he's gonna be behind you, you understand? Yeah. Quinn checks out. The perfect immigrant. Big success, the American dream. Yeah. Nobody's perfect. Yeah, well, there is one thing that doesn't necessarily apply to Quinn, but makes for an interesting concept. What's that? It seems the Vietnamese have this saying, man of a hundred deceptions and a thousand plots. Part of their concept that's known as the hundred year ambush. What that means is, you set things up so that years later, your trap is sprung. Where'd you get that? Huh. Only Vietnamese speaking cop in the department. The new undercover officer, if you approve. Molly! Terrific out there. Molly, I'd like you to meet Lieutenant Frank Janik. Frank, meet Molly Tron. Pleasure, Molly. Nice meeting you. Nice meeting you. Quinn needs a new hostess for his restaurant. His daughter's going off to college, and I was thinking, well, maybe we could put Molly in. My uncle owns a Vietnamese restaurant in Seattle. I've talked to him. He'll back up any story I want. You don't have to do this, you know. I want to. She wants to be a detective. Well, you're not going to get a gold shield going undercover for a couple of weeks, but you'll learn a lot. Remember, this is not a game. I know that, Lieutenant. Think she can handle it? Well, she's smart and she's cool, Frank. 
looks so... Ah, she looks so small. Are you kidding? She's a black belt. You see a throw that guy? You like her, don't you? Yeah, she's kind of nice. Okay, we'll try her out. You and Gene will run her. I want you to watch out for her. Train her good. I don't want anything to happen to her. Hey, neither do I. You want to get something? No. I just want to go straight home. I've had it. So you could say that Jerry Renfrew's another war casualty. The war broke him. He's riddled with guilt, so that's what I'm working on. But Wyckoff doesn't care, so long as I bring him a dirty cop. But you don't feel that way. Mm. You can't feel good about putting away another cop, even if it's your job. Uh, for me, it's the case. You know, that's the challenge. But this one's got me. I mean, I've been writing Sal about the way he's hung up on the Griselles. Now I guess I'm getting hung up on this one. In what way? I don't know. Everything's so damn... Coincidental. Two murders, years apart, the same M.O. <laughs> I don't know. Could it be the same killer? Huh? Could be. Could be the same killer acting out a ritual as if the rest of the world is going on about his business and he's locked in place. Do you think it's Renfrew? Renfrew's mixed up in it. I'm sure of that. I just have to find out how. Well, I got the job. Dynamite. It's really great. He had me trailing his daughter for three nights. In the restaurant business, that's how you learn the job. What's he like? He's a nice guy so far. You want to get close to somebody in there. Choose someone. Turn them into a friend. Well, there's this bus boy. Better if it's a woman. Easy to gossip and get information, you know? Girl talk. Yeah. Want to make sure you got home okay. <laughs> you know, I think you're the first lady that ever said that to me. Well, that's a good line. I like it. So do I. Just been sitting here thinking about you. Wow. Ah. You know. Yeah, I've been thinking about you a lot these days. <sighs> you know, I think I like hearing you say that. Well, I want you to like it. I want you to like everything about me. Well, I already do. You really? Yeah. Yeah, I do. That makes me feel good. Um, I've also been thinking a lot about your case. Oh? Which one? The Vietnamese girl. What about her? Well, I know this guy. He was there, and uh, he's an expert. I thought I'd give him a call and try to set something up, but that's okay with you. What, is he a... Uh... An ex-boyfriend? Well, he's a friend of mine. Well, then maybe I shouldn't meet him. Are you jealous? Jealous? No. Oh, sure, sure, as we all say. A <laughs> hey, woman my age must know I have half. <laughs> Your age. Joe, you're just a kid. <laughs> you're an old, old man. All right, give your ex a call. Yeah, thanks, Joe. Just trying to be of some help. I appreciate it. I'm sorry, yeah. I'm not with you right now. Now you do. Good night. Have you known Janet, Karen? Frank? <laughs> 10, 12 years. 
When I first started out, I thought I was a pretty good detective. But it was Frank who taught me what it was all about. What is it about? People. That's it? That's it. Well, you gotta do your legwork. You gotta follow the paper trail. Tickets, phone bills, welfare records, all of that. You gotta sort and evaluate. But in the end, it's people. Who they are, how they think, why they do the things they do. Can you really learn that? <laughs> Some guys never learn. But the great cops, and Frank is a great cop, that's why every one of them is strong. You really like the work, don't you? I love it, Molly. I don't know yet, but I think I'm going to love it, too. Hey, Mario. Take it easy, Tony. Good night, bitch. Drop you at home, Sally boy? Quinn, you startled me. I have friends in Seattle, Molly. They know your uncle's restaurant, but they do not know you. Who are you, Molly? Who do you work for? This girl, Baktuk. Who is she, Quinn? She was my sister. <laughs> well, is it that nice of you to tell us that? Who the victim was should not make any difference. But it did, didn't it? Maybe you hired someone to kill Marie. Why? Revenge, that's why. You followed Renfrew, found out he was seeing Marie, then had her killed to set him up. Then you contacted us, so we'd look for an XMP. No way, that's twisted! Yeah, for a normal person, maybe. Maybe not for a guy who works the hundred-year ambush. Told you about that. Molly. Look, I I never heard of this detective Renfrew. You know, I am beginning to wonder whether that advisor of yours was right when he said you were a fine young detective. I did a good job. Oh, did you? Your case file stinks. You ran this investigation like an amateur. I was good. Yeah, good and scared, huh? Scared of what you might find. Like, why was your sister whoring around? That is a lie! Who were her regular customers? She was a singer! My sister oh, was a was singer! she? Really? Yes, she was! A girl was murdered. Your job was to investigate her life. Not come up with some kid's drawing to try to put the blame on some nameless American. Lieutenant, I did the best job I did. Well, that wasn't America. good enough! The guy who killed your sister is the same guy who wasted Marie. So what did they have in common? Kinky sex? Drugs? What? Big bad cop performance work, Frank. You never really thought he framed Jerry, did you? Uh, but I knew there was stuff he wasn't telling us. <sighs> Tell you, this is a crazy case. They're all crazy. So what's he saying now? Seems besides her singing, Bach truck moonlighted for some kind of, quote, special escort service. 
I tell you, if it was me out there and I had a victim tied up like that, it's the first place I'd have looked. That was the place to start. Come in? Well, I'd like to, but I gotta get back to the office. I got about two hours of paperwork. Okay. Frank. Just a call last night. I waited. I know it's tough. Yes, I saw him tonight. I I just got in. Nothing. We had a good time. That's all. Listen, Mark. I don't. I don't think this is going to work out. Why not? It just isn't. That's it. I'm trying to tell you that I can't do this. I don't have it in me. Of course I care for you, you're my brother. No, I don't want that to happen. It's just that all this, it, Mark, it makes me feel bad. I'll do the best I can, but there's a limit. You've got to understand that, Mark. I can only go so far. There's only so much I can do. Does he know who I am? Of course. And he's excited to meet you. He's writing a book about Saigon, the whole scene over there. <laughs> he may never finish it, but he knows a lot about it. Everybody knew the whole house of cards was gonna fall, so there they were. Everybody running around, liquidating their assets, organizing their getaways. <laughs> Tell me about the prostitution scene. What do you want to know? Special escort services. Oh, yeah, they had them. Madame Ahn, Madame Bin, Belle du Jour. Oh, also, Madame Hung, old Mama San. High, squeaky voices, lots of diamond rings. What do they mean by uh, special? Little girls, little boys, little. Let's say you like to hurt people. If that was your scene, Saigon was your town. God, you'd have thought the people over there had seen enough pain. Saw it. Got to like it. See, Sagan brought out your worst. It was like a, a big hothouse where everything sick grew, flourished. The Mamasans, it was their job to help you enjoy it. See how far you were willing to go. Yeah, đúng rồi ạ. Đúng là bà Hồng đó rồi. Yeah, xin điện thoại bắt là gì ạ? Molly's doing great. She's already nailed down two of the mama sons. Now she's working on the third. How did she do it? 
Immigration records, refugee groups. One of these days, she's gonna be a very good detective. I'm supposed to meet these ladies? Meet and interrogate. Madam's on in Washington and been in Tampa. Yeah, yeah, come on, Oma. We're now home in Atlanta. Oh, this could be a very nice trip, Aaron. On, been in home, just what I need. <laughs> what about Belle du Jour? Arrested by the VC, then sent to a re-education camp. No one's seen her since. Thanks. What you do, you tell them they gotta meet with one of your principals. And that means they gotta be patted down for wires. Pat them down, they're gonna wanna pat you down. Uh-huh, so we'll all pat each other. We'll play patty cake, patty cake. Now, I got a better idea. There's a Ukrainian bathhouse down on the Lower East Side. We'll meet there, in the steam room. No clothes, no guns, no wires, everybody safe. You gonna tell them who you are? No, I can't do that, no. I don't think they buy that a lieutenant from IAD's in on a deal like this. What about you goes Aaron Greenberg? <laughs> yeah. I like that, Sal. I like that. I seen you before. I could swear that detective division, right? Mm, something like that. So who are you? Pardon me for asking, but I'd like to know who I'm doing business with. The name's Greenberg. I'm a whip on SIU out of inspectional services. Internal affairs? Yeah, so what? Now wait a minute. You didn't say nothing about Listen, you. Greenberg. Sal here never said nothing about you guys was IAD. How do you think we found out about you? They know about us? We know about you. You better explain. All right, we got on to you, we talked it over, we decided you were the kind of guys we were looking for. So far, it seems to be working out. What if we hadn't gone along? Then you'd be in a lot of trouble. I don't like the way you're saying that. Hey, come on, come on, come on. This is business. We need you and you need us. So let's get this deal moving. Set a date. Guys like that make me want to puke. Frank just told him we were IAD. What? to find out sooner or later. Besides, bandits like them have no trouble believing that we're bandits in IAD. In fact, the more they think about it, the better they're going to like it. Yeah. We'll see. Let's go. Who knows what else we'd find? Sal's got me worried. He hates too much. He can turn into a fanatic going after other cops. Even if they're scum like himself. He's... You know, I was in a steam room with him, and even then I felt dirty. <laughs> You always have to talk about them. What? Your cases. Oh, I, uh... I thought you were interested. <sighs> Frank, I've got something to tell you. And I've got something to tell you. Great cook. Come on, 
I'm going home. Everybody out of the pool. Oh, here we go. Come on. In the bag. Get in there. Get in there. There we go. And we're off. And like I told you, sir, this space has been empty for about the last three months. Well, that may be. But this is the room. This Madam Bin won't see me, Frank. What do you mean she won't see you? Why? What can I tell you? She's not a good citizen. Come on, Aaron. OK, it's because I'm not an officer. She said that? No, Jade said it. Seems some Vietnamese are like this. They make these kind of social distinctions. Wait, wait, wait. Jade, who the hell is Jade? She's Madame Bin's, you know, what do you call it? Bodyguard or something. I don't, Frank, look, you gotta see this yourself. Well, will Madame Bin see me? That's what I'm telling you. Look, you know I wouldn't bother you if it didn't smell like something was up. So you want me down there? Yes, ASAP. I'll be on the next plane. Dave, can I talk to you for a minute? Excuse us, Kevin. Dave, something I want you to do. There's a loft downtown. They say it's been unoccupied for the last three months. I put a seal on the door last night. Here's the address. What I want you to do, I want you to go there. I want you to make a search. Something I'm looking for? Prints on the doorknobs, wherever. Wake up pills, cigarette butts, anything else you can find. I, you want to know what this is all about? Well, it's sort of personal. Somebody's been watching me and Joe. It's good enough for me, Frank. Thanks. How do we do, Molly? Oh, I got you on an Eastern nonstop, leaving from Kennedy at noon. Oh, terrific. Hey, call the desk and check me out of the city, will you? And thanks again. Oh, hey, Gene, walk me out, will you? What's up? Well, I got to catch a plane, meet Aaron down in Tampa. Just got time to go by the apartment, get myself a clean shirt and a toothbrush. I want you to run a name check for me. Joanna Gates, G-A-T-E-S, 181 Arbor Street. Got it. Start with NYPD, then any other agency that might be running a surveillance. You want to know if she's being watched? Or wiretapped. No big deal. I just want to make sure. I'll get right on it. Thanks. I'll bring you a suntan. Yeah, so I'll probably get back late tomorrow night. Frank, um, about that guy? Oh, don't worry about him. I am worried. It's like I told you last night, he's just some creep. He's cleared out, so that's the end of it. Well, I gotta go, Joe. Frank? Yeah? Um... There's something that I need to talk to you about. What? Well, I don't know. It, um, I mean, it, it's hard. I, you're at the airport and... Listen, Joe, they're giving the final call. Can we talk about this when I get back? Sure. You okay? Okay. I'll see you tomorrow. Atlanta and Washington, zilch. But this one's different. You talk to her? Just to Jade, but I've seen her. What's she like? 
I tell you, Frank, she looks the way your Chinese grandmother would look if your Chinese grandmother was totally evil. Whole setup looked like a pro job. Not like your standard peeper. You asked Jean to check out Joe? Yeah, I name check, yeah. Jean knows she's your girl? Hmm. You know, if it is a pro, why'd he be watching Joe? I don't think he was. What do you think? It would only make sense if he was watching me. Right. You're an IAD. Going after cops, you make a lot of enemies, and cops know how to snoop. Hey, pretty nice. Very nice. This Madame Bin, she must have gotten out with a lot of bucks. A lot of bucks, Frank? We're talking mucho a lot of bucks. Sticky. Oh, I hate this humidity. Tropic climate. Yeah, down here, those shirts you wear finally make some sense. Yeah. Don Ho sends me these. Uh, oh, come on. He does. Don Ho. Oh, Jade. It's me again and Lieutenant Janik. Madame Bean is expecting you. Follow me, please. Yes, there were men who liked to hurt the girls. And since there were girls who would take the hurt for money, I became a broker of that kind of arrangement. Uh, and what do you mean, uh, hurt the girls? Well, there were limits. Most men did not wish to do serious harm. They only wanted uh, the illusion. What if they wanted more? They went to someone else. And what happened if they uh, exceeded the limits? They would pay extra, of course. How much extra? Oh, maybe ten times the agreed upon fee. Madam Bin, did you know about the murder of a uh, bar singer named Baktuk during the last weeks of the war? Everyone knew. By any chance, would you happen to know who might have done that? That is a very interesting question. I just might have an idea about that. And uh, how do you like Tampa, Lieutenant? Oh, it's a little warm for me, especially when I'm dressed up. No, I, I can take it or leave it. Myself, I like it here very much. The heat reminds me of Saigon. No offense, Madam Bin, but we didn't come here to discuss the weather. Yes, I know. You came to talk about murder. Yes. I believe it was this one. We knew him as the Major. An intelligence officer, as I recall. Most charming gentleman, but uh, at times liable to get carried away. I always thought he was the one. Why him? I had my reasons. Uh, what reasons? Often he would overstep. This Major, who was he? <laughs> We didn't ask names, Lieutenant. We didn't know names. Names were not the point. Not the point. Yeah. Madam Bin, Baktuk worked for you, didn't she? Sometimes, yes. And you brokered her last arrangement, didn't you? As a matter of fact, I did. I'm late for my golf lesson. You must excuse me, gentlemen. Just one more question, please. If you know it was this major why didn't you report him? This was Vietnam, Lieutenant. Uh, to come forward, to report. This is not good business. But as you can see, now I am being very frank. According to my book, Lieutenant, this gentleman, the Major, he owes me a great deal of money. 
Since it's clear after all this time, he has no intention of paying. I feel no further obligation to remain discreet. I tell you one thing. Maybe it will help you. The Major, he liked to interrogate the girls. I wonder what her handicap is. Nice skin. Looks expensive. Nice and smooth like Miss Joanna's face. Now listen very carefully. We're messengers, see? So here's the message. Your boss, she blabs. This could happen to her pretty face. Maybe the face of someone close, near and dear. Be sure and tell her that. Capiche? Guy like to interrogate. It's not enough, Frank. How do you find a guy like that? We're gonna have to run another computer search. Before we were looking for XMPs, now it's an intelligence officer. At least we know his rank. Wasn't Renfrew station stationed in some kind of a detention center? For captured enemy officers. Ah, well, if they kept enemy officers there, they must have interrogated them. Sure, and off base, Renfrew could have said he was a major. So what are you saying, Frank? We back with Renfrew? Maybe, maybe not. I'd like to find out. He won't tell you nothing, Frank. Not Jerry Renfrew. I think he will, Aaron. If I ask him right. How about that name check, Frank? The lady's clean. Nobody's watching her. Not officially, anyway. No, thanks, Jane. What about the loft? Full of prints. Building employees, mostly. But there was one thumbprint I couldn't match. On a styrofoam coffee cup. Hey, Frank, remember that discussion we had in Florida? Maybe this guy, he's watching you. Drop me off at Joanna's, will you, Dave? Just a little tired. Oh, I want to show you what I, uh, what I read on the plane. I've been studying up. Okay, Joe, what's the matter, huh? Hey, it's me, Frank. Come on, what's the matter? Just a little trouble at the gallery, that's all. Uh, serious? No, no, it's not serious. It sounds like you and Aaron hit the jackpot. I thought you said you didn't want me to uh, talk about my cases. I'm sorry. So what do you want to talk about? Huh? Well, yesterday you said there was something you wanted to uh, talk about. All right, Joanna, come on, level with me. What's bothering you? I'm worried about us. What about us? Maybe we shouldn't see each other so much. Well, we're doing great. I, I thought we were doing great. We are doing great. It's not that. It's, it's, it's that I'm scared. Scared? Well, what were you scared of? You, were you scared of involvement? 
Yeah, maybe that's it. Well, you know what I think? I think you're worried about me. You think I'm pushing too hard on this Griselli thing. You're afraid something's gonna go wrong. That's it, isn't it? How did you know that? Mm -hmm. When you asked me not to talk about it, that was the tip-off. I've heard that before. Every cop has heard that before. It's what we call cop's wife syndrome. It, oh, oh, no, of course, I'm not saying that you're like a wife, no, but you understand what I mean? I just don't want anything to happen to you. Not to you, or me, or anyone. It's that paper, isn't it? Huh? It's that paper. Well, that's over, that's finished. We took care of that. I'd never let anyone hurt you, ever. Mark? Joe. God, I thought you'd never call. I had to wait an hour. It's hard to get a phone here. I know. Listen. It's over. I'm not doing this anymore. But wait, Joe, just I one mean more it, time, Mark. I I'm finished. If you really mean it, then I'm finished too, you know? How do you know they're not bluffing? They're not. If they threaten you again, you tell them I'm going straight to Janik. You make them understand. No matter what it costs, that's what I'm gonna do. No, don't do that. It'll be okay. Just don't do anything, all right? I'll take care of it. Well? Look, I know her. She says she's out. She's really out. Janet? Jerry, tell me about the Major. Interrogator, relentless. He got to like it, didn't he? Wearing people down, watching them squirm, scream. What's the matter, Jerry? Haven't you got anything to say? What's gonna happen to me? No promises. Not till I've heard it all. If you're clean, you help me nail him, well, probably be okay. What about that girl in Saigon? That's not our case. But if you're implicated in Marie Evans' homicide, even a little bit, we'll have to see how I feel about that. What happened to Marie was my fault. Well, then, why don't we start at the beginning, back in Saigon. You were a lowly corporal and he was a major. Huh. So how did you two meet? compound near the airfield where the prisoners were interrogated. Sometimes at night a chopper would land. They'd bring in a new prisoner with a bag over his head. There was an office and a barracks where the MP guards lived and close by a detention center where the major questioned the prisoners. We didn't know what went on in there. Rumor was that they kept the prisoners in freezing cells. It made me nervous living close to it trouble getting to sleep. You couldn't hear anything, but you knew what was going on. You knew that people were being hurt. Me and another guy were playing ball, and we noticed the major come out of the detention building to talk to our CO. Next thing, the CO orders us to form a detail, and then he turns us over to the major. Later, when it was dark, the major took us into the detention building. It was cold in there. I started to shiver right away. 
There were these gooks in the interrogation room, and as soon as they saw us, they got up out of our way. I took one look, I wanted to puke. The Major makes us carry the dead prisoner out. We hauled him back down the corridor and then loaded him into this meat wagon they kept around the back. Blood all over us. I stood in the shower just scrubbing away. I still felt dirty. I just couldn't seem to get it off. That night again, I couldn't sleep. That was your first contact with him? It was the first time we actually spoke. So one night, I'm in this bar outside the base. Minding my own business, smoking a joint. And who walks in but Major C? I was scared. You know, an MP smoking grass, he could put me on report. But then he sits down right next to me. He puts out his hand like he wants a hit. He didn't say a word, but I felt, I don't know, like he had this hold over me. And when he left, he said, Corporal, you owe me one. What did he mean? Uh, a couple of weeks later, I found out. It was night, hotter than hell. You could hear the mortars. The VC were closing in, and I'm trying to sleep when I feel someone standing over my bunk. soldier. Again, he led me into the detention building. This time, there wasn't anybody else around. And this time, it was a girl who was dead. The story was she was a VC agent, that one of his Vietnamese interrogators got carried away. We got to get rid of her, he says. The war's almost over, and we don't want to be connected to something like this. He'd had a car brought around. We put the dead girl in the trunk, and he told me to get into my uniform. He was a major, I was a corporal, so I did like I was told. He said no one would stop me. I was in uniform and an official car. He was right. He told me to drive down to the Saigon River and turn into one of those dirt tracks and dump her there. I did what he said. Of course, I didn't know some kid was watching, hiding in those reeds. I dumped her. I drove back, and he swore me to secrecy. That was it? Yeah. The next couple of weeks were pretty frantic. They were taken up with the evacuation. Yeah. What about Major C? I never saw him again. They closed the detention center. The rumor was that they took the prisoners up in the plane and they threw them out. You were evacuated? Yeah. 
a couple of months later, I got my discharge. The only thing I knew was law enforcement, so I applied to NYPD. But you did see him again, didn't you, Jerry? I heard about him from Marie. One day she was telling me about this client of hers. I'd like to tie her up in this special way and then ask her all these intimate questions. Oh. It's just play, she says. Guy doesn't really hurt her, but he wants her to pretend that she's being hurt. He tape records their sessions, he takes pictures. Uh. Oh. There's something weird about him, she said. Something that scares her. So I ask her, why don't you just dump the guy? She says, no, she can handle him. She says she needs him. And something for you. Pot, smack, coke, he's got it all. The guy's like a total pharmacist. So, you know, I'm interested. It sounds like the kind of guy I'd like to bust. But she won't tell me his name. She says, Who, who's going to supply her if I put him away? Am I going to take up the slack? I pretend to let it go. And then one night, when I knew that they had a date, I trailed along. I followed them over to the 79th Street boat basin, and I watched them board a boat. Major C's boat? Yeah, Major C's. I couldn't believe it. And then... <laughs> I put it all together. That girl in Saigon, she was tied up exactly the way that Marie had described. She wasn't killed by some, by some incompetent interrogator. The Major killed her, and then he had me help him clean up his mess. Hmm. That make you mad, Jerry? Oh, you're damn right. Canfield was a killer. Canfield? Yeah, Major Ross L. Canfield, the number three guy in the New York Drug Enforcement Administration. He's a crooked cop, he's, he's dealing drugs, and now he's messing with my girl, and I was ready to kill. And that similarity is reflected in how we do our work. You people have come here this afternoon to hear somebody tell you something. There was a NARC division briefing. I don't usually go to these things, but I heard that Canfield was going to speak. And why you're here to discuss the relationship. So I go, the and I'm sitting there, and I'm listening, and I'm staring and right the at the guy. And he looks straight through me. He didn't know who I was. There are similarities in the structure of both organizations. It seemed like there was two ways to go. I could bust him with all that dope and use Marie as a witness. But who would take the word of some hooker junkie against a, some hot shot from the DEA? <clears throat> What's the other way? those pictures and tapes. I figured that if I could get my hands on those, I'd be in a position to do Canfield some real damage. Blackmailing? Yeah. Yeah, something like that, yeah. So you convinced Marie to go along? Yeah, I told her that if I had those pictures, I could force Canfield to give her everything that he had. You know, I, I, I keep going over it in my head. I, you know, maybe she was nervous and he picked up on it, maybe. He caught her snatching the photographs and killed her outright. Or maybe he just got carried away like he did with that girl in Saigon. Yeah, I thought of that. Yeah, but you couldn't say anything because you were all involved in this uh, blackmail scheme. And while you were thinking blackmail, your girlfriend got herself killed. Look, I wanted to protect her, okay? But she wouldn't hear about it. She was too strung out. You know, I thought that if I had the pictures, I, I, I could score for us both. But when it went wrong, what was I supposed to do? I am a good cop, Janik. Oh, sure, yeah. Well, just a little sleazy, a little corrupt, maybe, but not nearly as bad as Canfield, right? Okay, okay. Arrest me, all right? I deserve it. On the other hand, going after those photos, that, uh... That was not such a bad idea. What? With them and your testimony, we just might have enough. Yeah, but this Vietnamese girl, I'm still implicated. Oh, no, forget that, forget That was a long time ago. Canfield killed Marie. Let's get him for it. Let's nail the son of a bitch. So I had to go to this party last night, and I was sitting there. I had Giancarlo on the one side, and I had this Japanese cultural attache on the other side. And they were both being attentive and charming, but the whole time I was just thinking about how I could get out of there so I could be with you. <laughs> no, I don't know about that, no. It's got to be pretty dull listening to me talk about my work all the time. No, it's, it's interesting. I go on and on and on. I know that. Frank, I love your stories. Uh, 
Well, the other night you, uh, you seemed a little... Oh. Hmm? Frank, I did have a problem, and, and I wanted to talk to you about it, but I, cu I couldn't. All right, well, then let's talk about it now. Well, I don't have the problem anymore. It's over. Gone. No problem. No problem. You sure? Yes, I'm sure. Okay. Frank, thanks for not giving up on me. Never. I could never give up on you. So as long as Renfrew called him the Major, I called him the Major. When he called him Major C, I called him Major C. Then when he said Canfield... I called him Canfield. Never occurred to him you didn't know. Yeah, but don't tell him that. I don't want him to feel bad. <laughs> I hear that. Ta-da! This is Canfield's boat? This is it. Pretty rich for a guy in the DEA. Yeah. His apartment's pretty rich, too. Yeah. And if you dump the body in here, she could float straight down to that pier. Right. And a guy who likes boats would know a lot about nuts, right? Yeah. Now I want to introduce our special speaker. You all know him for the good works he's done and for his commitment to the YAF. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to present your friend and mine, Mr. New York Youth Athletic Fund, Ross Canfield. talk to you tonight, tonight about a scourge, scourge that is devastating our young people, the scourge of drugs, and about the role your fund is playing in providing a healthy alternative. When this guy puts up a good front, he could sure sell me. Like a hell of an interrogator, man. I'll say. Big shot at the DEA, great war record, member of the board of the YAF. Yeah, that's some resume. Ain't no way we're gonna get a warrant on the hearsay of Madame Bin. We'll have to trap him. Any ideas? I want to use Quinn and Renfrew. <laughs> Will they go for it? Yeah, they'll go for it. They hate him. We'll just have to show them how to use that hate. I got it. No, I got it. I got it right here. Aaron, I got it. Thanks. Appreciate it. What about Canfield? He's walking around. Can you get him? I want to. How? Trap him. If you agree, in here. If you can trap him here, I would be very, very pleased. He's got to pay for it. That's right, Major. I'm working narcotics now. Which kind of brings me to why I called. I'm thinking about making a transfer, maybe making a change over to the DEA. And I was wondering if we could have dinner together, maybe talk about it. I would appreciate any advice that you have to give me. Yeah, well, I know this uh, little Vietnamese restaurant down in Chinatown. You know, for old time's sake. Great. Tuesday, 8 o'clock? Good. I'll pick you up. All right. Bye-bye. Contact. The Griselli's want a meeting. Everybody in on the operation. Well, sounds reasonable. How do you feel about it? I feel pretty good. Mm. You trust them? They double cross us in a second. But since this is a sting, they don't have a chance. I don't know. What's the matter? No. These guys are almost too dirty, you know what I mean? Oh, not exactly. Well, most of the crooked cops we deal with are mixed up by own circumstances. They got reasons. These guys are just 
animals. The way I look at it, Frank, that's all the more reason to take them down. So you're thinking about a transfer, huh? Yeah, and I was hoping maybe you could help. Anything's possible. <laughs> Thank you, Major. To the good old times. And now, to our lost youths. Starting to relax. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Quinn's still smoldering over there. I don't care if he smolders, I just don't want him to burst into flames. Mm -hmm. Let me see if I can cool him off. You get a beer, please. Keep staring at him like that, he's gonna pick up on it. You okay? I'm a little nervous. Nervous is good, gives you that sexy itch. When do I go for Canfield? Later. Just take it easy, circulate. Street work, that's the fun. Mm. I hate the bureaucratic crap. Well, listen, you spend time on the street, you'll learn to hate that, too. Yeah, at least you do something. Yeah. Sure, I, I bust junkies, and I make them get rid of their dealers, and then I bust dealers, and I make them get rid of their distributors. <laughs> it's a vicious cycle. That's why I'm looking for a change. No, I'd settle for a nice, comfy, high-paying desk job, you know? Think he's noticing? Oh, yeah, he's noticing. He hasn't been able to take his eyes off you. I'm going to ask you one more time. You sure you want to go through with this? I'm sure. Could be risky. That's why I like it. Good girl, Molly. Go to it. At least you're not bored. Well, that's why I gotta get out of there. So, hmm. why don't you come visit me more often, Jerry? I miss you. Well, I will from now on. Promise? Scout's honor. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> I really mean it. Yeah. She's overdoing it, Frank. Yeah. Maybe a little. So, why don't you give Quinn the high sign? He's a good guy, a good cop. Jerry's okay. Can we buy you a drink? Gone cat hang, dear tip now. See you later. See you later. Everything all right? It's great, as usual, Miss Black. Hot stuff. Bar girl talk. I haven't heard that in years. It reminds me of a time I just as soon forget. Oh, come on. The bar is the girls. Yeah, but Molly's different. Americanized. Oh, you better believe it. I mean, you know, the food's good here, but... Molly makes me nervous. She likes you. Yeah, well, she comes on strong, don't you think? What's the matter with her? She looks good to me. Well, she's got her own scene going. Drugs? No. I mean, she'll do a joint once in a while, but that's not it. Yeah. She's kinky. Getting a Mies girl into kinks. Interesting. The Sullivan thing. I told Wyckoff it's petty bribery. We don't do crap like that. What do you hear from Canfield? Hasn't called. He will. Give him time. Now the Griselli's. Sal's got some ideas. Okay, if they want to meet everybody involved. To get acquainted or what? No, to give us the plan. Ooh, <laughs> sounds good to me. Tell them they got it. So do we wear wires? No, we don't wear nothing. We just keep suckering them in. What about backup? Dave, you know, what do you want to take a chance? You blow a good case. Sounds right. We're going to sting these guys. Let's sting them good. Yeah, let's take them to the brink. But check the meeting place real good. I don't want any screw-ups. No screw-ups, Frank. Canfield's taking the bait. He's going to call. How can you be sure? 
the look in his eye. And it's a funny thing. Aaron's upset. He likes Molly. She's too young for him, of course, but still he likes her. Hangs around her all the time, very protective. See, he's too good a cop to uh, not want this thing to work. You love your people, don't you? Well, we're kind of like family. Aaron's maybe my best friend, Sal. He's kind of like a son. Fred, Gene, Dave. If it wasn't for people like them, this town would be like Beirut. And now, Sal's got me worried. Oh, he's too, too involved. He doesn't want to back up. No back up. Uh. Isn't that dangerous? Yeah, but he's afraid it might scare the Vasellis off. Was there something else you could do? Well, we were going to tape him. But then we decided to wait. Wait? I, I don't understand. Why would you wait? Well, whatever we get wouldn't mean anything. <laughs> At best, we could show what? <laughs> Conspiracy. Well, I think that's something. Yeah, but not enough. So far, all the Griselli's have done is talk. They could claim they've been stringing us along. That we're the ones who are corrupt. They could do it. But that's ridiculous. I know, I know. But a smart lawyer might get them off. Uh, new smoking gun. We need to catch them in some kind of a illegal act. Promise me you'll be careful. Sure? Am I sure? We've been sitting there four hours. Yeah, it's a nice neighborhood. Check inside? It's clear. There's only one guard on at night, and he left ten minutes ago. Just like he's supposed to. Where do we meet him? Inside. Let's go. A.M. I should be here any minute. We'll give him five. What are you doing? Frank, what's the matter? You're a couple of minutes late. I'm going to take another look around.
What is it, Frank? I don't know. I don't know. Just something that's... Uh... I don't like us all being bunched together like this. Fine. Let's spread out. Out of the car. This thing, right? Yeah. I wonder. Maybe this thing's on us. Griselli's wouldn't dare. No, not them. Uh, they're probably sitting in some station house right now, setting themselves up with a good alibi. All right, then who? Maybe the Colombian friends. What do you want to do, Frank? <laughs> I think we should get the hell out of here. Sal! It's a setup, Frank! That's her seat. He's waiting for us. He's screwed up. They got Uzi. We can't fight him with these toys. Nine last night, the Griselli's went in to see McGuire. Reported an illegal overture from IAD detectives. Bastards. They named you, friend. You and Sam. I should have smelled it. It wasn't your fault, Frank. Sal got sucked in. All he wanted was to bring in crooked cops. He wanted it too much. Just terrific. I can hear the whole thing now. Sorry, Commissioner. Big misunderstanding. They thought we was wise guys. We thought they was wise guys. The whole thing's a wash. Well, there's not going to be any wash. How did they know they could hit us just then when we didn't have backup? Maybe somebody let something slip. 
What, you saying it could have been Sal? Maybe it was. All right, all right, all right. I got another idea. Like what? That peeper, the guy that was watching me and Joe. Yeah? What if he had her apartment bugged? That thumbprint. The one off the cuff, yeah? I want you to run that print against the print of every cop in the department with surveillance expertise. Ex-cops, too. Like that people worked for the Griselli's. You got it, Frank. Good afternoon, IAD. White cuff, Frank. Yeah, John. Yeah. Right away. They want me downtown. Commissioner's office? Yeah. Where are you going, Gene? Something I want to check. It was all a misunderstanding, Lieutenant. We feel real bad, Lieutenant. Frank. Shoot out in the garage. One dead Colombian, one dead IED detective. Accusations of IED corruption. Photos of Detective Marchetti taking money from a brothel, madam. It was a frame-up, I told you. Of course. But it raises a lot of questions. You got no photos. Got no tapes. Got no corroborating witnesses. Even Gen X word. As far as I'm concerned, you guys are tops. But I got a big PR problem on my hands. Give me three days. Hold on, Frank. I'm... Wait a minute. You can wind this up in three days. Either I wind it up or I'm no kind of detective. Okay, I accept that. What's with this three days, Frank? That's after they bury Sal. What's that got to do with it? Nothing. Are you onto something? Probably not. Well, why did you tell him that? I'm just sick of hearing what a big PR problem he's got. There, stop. Mark Gates. Let's call up the file. Well? Hmm. Yes or no? Mm hmm. Oh, come on, Stoney. Close. How close? Looks the same to me. That's what I'm telling you. You mean? It's a match. Terrific. O'Malley, Jack D, Sergeant, Detective Division, left the force three years ago. Two special accommodations, wiretapping expert, owns his own business now, surveillance consultant. Me, O'Malley. <laughs> oh, oh, 
Yeah, I hear some guys die from that. <laughs> they can't. So die, O'Malley. Talk or die. What are you doing? Am I mad? Am I mad? Let's hear it, O'Malley. <laughs> Who hired you? <sighs> Mario Griselli. You tipped him off on a sting? Oh, no. What'd you tell him? Nothing. Nothing. Uh, look, once Jack spotted me, I was burned as far as visuals concerned. But I already had a place wired, so I listened from my van. I taped what she and Jack said, that's all. Look, I, I, I gave Mario them tapes. I didn't even listen to that tapes. I mean, what do I care? Just Janet here, fooling around the pooch. Watch your mouth, slime ball. Uh, it's no offense, Lieutenant. I just thought Mario was checking on the girl. I swear I didn't know nothing. Mario paid you. You'll testify to that. Hey, a cop get killed? Sure, I'll testify. I'd still like to offer you the pig. <laughs> <laughs> Never easy, friend. You know the Colombian you nailed? You got an ID. He's an enforcer for the Hernandez family. We got 30 detectives out right now looking for his friends. They're going to find them. Then they're going to squeeze them to give us the Griselles. I gotta tell you something. Yeah. Go ahead. You're not gonna like it. A lot of things I don't like, Gene. It's about Joanna Gates. What about her? You asked me to run a name check. Yeah. And I didn't find anything. I remember. So? So I looked a little further in my own time. And? I found something. This better be good, Gene, because I'm not in the mood right now. She's got a brother named Mark. I know that. Did you know he was in prison? Go on. Drug dealing. Five years. Look, Frank, maybe I'm out of line. The guys rag me, you know, like they think I like you or something, but I want you to understand that this has got nothing to do with anything. Attica? Huh? Is Mark Gates in Attica? Yeah. Frank, like I was saying. That's okay, Jean. I'll talk to you later. There's something I gotta do. Straight from the cemetery. I'm so sorry. Why didn't you tell me about your brother? Mark? I thought I did. 
Five years for dealing drugs. And you call that finding himself? A friend. But there's more to it than that, isn't there? <laughs> I don't know what because you Because Hart's mean. at Attica, too, in the same section as Mark. And he's got a lock on that section. Hmm. Coincidence? Wait, you're jumping to some... Ah, uh, no, no. Now it all makes sense. Hart tipped me off in the Grisellis. Small time. Mickey Mouse stuff, he says. And then you come up with that story about finding dope on a couch. So Sal took a look. And he sees something bigger. So we plan a sting. And the Grisellis fall for it. Or so we think. Except all the time, it's us who are being stung. Like it was all planned in advance by heart. And you were part of it. No. That's not right. I never knew anything about that. Didn't you? Well, you remember the peeper. We found him. He put a bug in your apartment. And when I told you the plan, he heard every word I said. That's how the Grisellis knew that we were going to be there all together, without backup. We drove right into the trap. Bug. They put a bug in my apartment? They got to you through Mark, didn't they? Huh? Hart threatened him. <laughs> Mark's a good-looking kid. He could have been treated rough in there, if Hart gave the word. Frank. That's the way it happens, isn't it? Huh? What do they do? They threaten him? They put the screws to him? They make him recruit you? Yes. That's how it started. But then I quit. I told Mark I wouldn't do it anymore, that I couldn't. But you didn't tell me. Why? Well, I was about to. And then the Griselis came back here, and, and they terrorized David, and they said that the next time they came back, they would cut our faces, Mark's and mine. When was that? You were in Florida. And still you didn't tell me? I was afraid. Afraid? Afraid of what? Afraid I wouldn't protect you? I wanted to tell you. I tried. Don't you remember? I mean, you've got to believe that. But the bottom line is you didn't. I didn't because I didn't think I had to. I talked to Mark. I told them that if they threatened him again, I would go straight to you. He said that it was okay, that the pressure was off, I could forget it. Then I decided that I wouldn't tell you because I was afraid that you'd hate me. I still, you asked me all those questions. I was worried about you. I didn't know they had a bug in my apartment. I was afraid they'd hurt you. Try to, try to do something. I, I don't know. I didn't know anything, not about Sal, but that it would go this far. If I thought you knew that. I couldn't live with myself. Frank, you've got to understand. It was a nightmare. I mean, Mark was calling and telling me that he was going to be raped or worse. And then you were telling me all this stuff. And the whole time, the way I felt about you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I love to hear about your cases, Frank. You were good, you know. You were really good calling me up. Asking me to dinner? Like you really liked me? I did. Oh, sure. <laughs> sure. I should have known. I mean, what would an attractive young woman like you, what would she see in a beat up middle aged cop like me? I saw plenty, Frank. Yeah? What? I fell in love with you. Oh, yeah. Sure. You don't believe that? What difference does it make now? I care for you. You care about me. <sighs> A cop is dead. Until today, I thought it was because he was too eager. And then I find out I was too eager myself. And that's another reason he's dead. And I gotta live with that now. I gotta live with that. As for you, Joe, whatever happens to you, that's up to the DA.
beside you. Gee. Can't feel bit. You just called Molly. They've got a date Monday night. Three days? Mm. How's she taking it? Well, she's glad it's finally going down. Huh. We'll try to keep her calm. This isn't going to be any kind of a cinch. I know. You got time for a cup of coffee? Sure. Okay. They're just about to get on the boat. Yeah, I got you, Aaron. Ooh, the gangplank is slippery. Hey, nice boat, Ross. Hey, can you turn the thing up, Brandon? It's so big. Much bigger than it looks from the outside. This is really nice, Ross. Nice for games. Jerry says you like games. Well, I like games. Jerry doesn't. Want a smoke? I want a drink. Some all scotch. Thanks. Don't like pot? Sometimes. Settling down, Aaron. Start the diversion. Gene and Dave, this is Aaron. Bring in the boat forthwith. Ahoy aboard the Bell Star! You're in the wrong What the ship. hell? What's happening? Damned if I know. I'll be right back. And we'll play. to the left of the bed, moving further. Guy, hold back. Nothing in the drawers to the right of the bed. You do that again, Buster. We're gonna have to shove you. Frank, she better hurry. I don't know how long they can keep him occupied. I'm searching the salon, checking the drawers near the couch. Will you get that tub out of here? That's our two thousand dollar parking space you're in. Around here somewhere. You gotta stall him. She's not done yet. Couple of drunks threatening to shove me aside. Drunks, huh? I'll call the harbor cops for you. Oh, yeah, thanks. Keep an eye on him. We're not gonna go away until you go away. Lots of tape. 
tapes here next to the television set. I think I see something. This may be it. Come on, fast, Molly, fast. Yeah, I found them. The photos. Hey, I got them. They're running out of stuff. Frankie's starting back. Aaron, you gotta do something. She needs some time. It's too late. He's going down. What are you up to? I was checking out the boat. What are you after, you little thief? Money? Drives? What have you got there? I said, what have you got there? What the? Get bold. What is this? Who are you? <laughs> Frank, we could have gone bowling. To Molly Tran and the day she gets her gold shield. Here, here. Huh? I'll take a piece of that. Hell great. of a job. Hell of a job. What about Renfrew, Frank? What's he going to do now? He's got to quit the force. That was a deal. But he'll be OK. Helping a trap Canfield. He unloaded a lot of guilt. You saved the guy, Frank. You really did. Yeah, some you save, some you don't. That's yeah, funny, I, I feel for him. Even though the poor bastard did everything wrong. Gotta admire you for caring. The day you stop caring, you're just another grill in the zoo. Huh? I'll see you guys tomorrow. Good night, Frank. Good night, Frank. Take it easy, partner. Yeah. Yeah. Frank? You know, I feel kind of... I don't know. You're one hell of a detective, Gene. Anyone ever tell you that? Grisellis, some guys, huh? I understand they gave you a little trouble. Mm, we took care of it. Yeah. I guess they weren't so easy to crack as I thought. They cracked once we separated them. Yeah, without Mario at his side, I, Tony is, I acts kind of stupid. They talked? Yeah. What'd they say? Congratulations, Chief. You're going to get a new trial. What are you talking about? I never heard nothing about that. Ah, well, I want to be the first one to tell you. You'll hear officially in a couple of hours. What, are they going to retry me on the Wallace oh, homicide? No, 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 no. New indictment. Lots more charges this time. What kind of charges? Homicide of a police officer. Attempted homicide of five others. Conspiracy to commit homicide. Lots of stuff like that. Like I said, the Griselli's talked. They made themselves a deal. Hell, they did. They already got me a life sentence. Who'd offer them anything to testify against me now? I convinced Wyckoff, and then Wyckoff and I, we convinced the prosecutor. There's no chance you're ever going to get parole, Hart. You're going to spend the rest of your life in here. Janik. I know, I know, yeah. I'm nothing. I'm just a small-time detective. The kind you put on Mickey Mouse stuff. I got you! That girl! I really suck at you with her, didn't I, Janet? Didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> 